Welcome to part one of a two-part series where I put the engine back together finally. Uh, there was just a little bit too much content for uh, one long video, so I've chopped it into two. So this half will have, you know, the theme song you love, it'll have a little introduction after the theme song, uh, and then the second one will just be, we just go right into it. So anyway, let's get started. Regarding automobiles, yeah. Okay, so if you're just interested in the actual like building of the engine, then you'll want to skip to this time code. I'm going to talk a little bit about the channel and updates and that type of thing before we start uh, and answer some viewer questions and comments. Uh, so the first thing, obviously, I just want to talk about or answer some questions, which is, you know, how do you stay motivated? Um, like, are you upset that <laughs> this car is not going to be worth uh, what, what you're putting into it? Those types of things. So first, uh, let me just say that uh, the education that I'm getting in the process is is the fun part. It's kind of type two fun, right? Like you, I'm banging my head against the wall during it, and then in retrospect, it ends up being fun. Um, but the the money I'm putting into the car, I'm seeing it more like tuition. Um, the hobby has become building the car, so that is the hobby. Uh, eventually, it will be back to driving the car, but. I'm not too upset about the money I'm putting into it because it really is. I just see it as like the fees for learning this. I've learned so much, <laughs> to be honest, uh, in this series myself, putting, you know, just putting an engine, spoiler alert, I, I put the engine back together. Um, so just doing that type of thing is just, it's great for me. Um, what keeps me motivated? I don't know. It's just, I mean, it's, again, it's, it's more of a, it's a hobby. It's fun. Obviously this isn't a professional channel. Um, so I just, you know, come out here, do two, three hours at a time. And it's that feeling of like, Think, like take for example rebuilding the head where I was just like I have no idea what I'm doing like I have no idea what I'm doing I don't know how I'm gonna do this uh, and it's just a matter of just do it like th that was the point of buying the car I mean it's been up on jack stands for two years how much worse could it possibly get so I'm just gonna so my philosophy has been like just go do it and yeah there's been delays and stuff with you know parts and just learning stuff and breaking things um, but just I just keep doing it and it always feels good to get a video done and, and post it so that's the main thing the other thing is too is uh, rather than like this super high-end YouTube channel I'm considering it more like a an engine build an old build thread or a car build thread if you remember from the old forum same would be like here's my build thread and every time they did anything on the car, they would just add a, a post to that thread. So that's more the, the spirit, I think, of this, um, which, you know, I'm not on the forums as much anymore. I think they're harder to find. Um, so, yeah, I think that's the spirit of it. Uh, in that spirit, uh, we're at about 500 subscribers right now. Uh, I do want to get to, I want to try and put some effort into actually getting more viewers. I enjoyed the comments. I enjoyed the feedback coming from, um, from the viewers. But also, if I can get to 1,000 subscribers, then I could be making, from what I understand, dozens <laughs> dozens of dollars every year so two to three of the gaskets that i put in this would be paid for every year um, but yeah so in that or towards that goal i now have a uh, social media presence i'm not a big social media guy but i have a facebook and i have an instagram and you can see them here so you can follow me and i'll follow you back or i don't know how it works but you you know how it works so do what you do on those medias and uh, i'm not sure how much content i'm going to put on there but you know it's there i just want to sort of you know reach out and start seeing other people that are working on their projects or that are uh, working on minis that type of thing uh, so yeah let's get to the engine build right now okay so let's set some expectations uh first engine won't run today not gonna be installing it into the car today. I'm just building it on the engine stand. For this step, uh, what we're gonna do first is I have a whole new set of piston rings. Uh, they are Hastings piston rings for this engine. And they're conveniently labeled, I guess as to the order. So I'm happy about that. One, two, and three. And I just need to use this fancy tool to make sure that they are the right size when I put them down into the cylinder. You'll remember that I painted this whole thing and taped it up so that it wouldn't you know, corrode or anything, so that it's time for that to come off. So here's one of the pistons. And then there's rings here to keep the oil, you know, when it goes up and down to sort of clean the cylinder and keep the oil where it needs to be. 
And then when you buy them, let's just open the top ones. So here's the top cylinder and there should be little marks on them, I assume. There's not. Well, the instruction said if there are no marks on it, then it can go either way. Okay. Uh, and the idea is this, Th these go on and they have to fit this cylinder exactly, but if they're too, if this gap, there has to be a gap here. If this gap gets too close together, like too pinched by the cylinder, uh, then when the engine heats up, it'll do weird things and probably wreck the engine again. Uh, so, so these are the number one top rings. Um, the instructions say like sometimes on the mod mini video, he talks about like notches being up and the instructions for these Hastings bear or, uh, rings. It says that if there's no mark, then it can go either way. So it doesn't matter which way I put it in. And then I'll just fit these inside. According. Take the piston. That way I know it's level. So that gap right there should be between 0.2 and 0.36 millimeters. Um, so the biggest it can be is 0.36. So here's a 0.35 and that does not fit in. So it's not too big. The smallest it can be is 0.2. Oh, there we go. That's the smallest it can be. And that fits in. Let's try and figure out what it actually is. 0.23, Ooh, that's pretty tight. 0.25, yeah, rubbing a bit, so I think it's gonna be 0.28. Yeah, so that's what it is, 0.28. Okay, pretty lucky there. <clears throat> Didn't have to do any grinding of the rings, which means that they're all to the right size. So let's do the second rings. Again, these, oh, these ones do have marks on them. Only on one side, so that side goes up. These tolerances on the second ring are a little bit different. They're 0.25 to 0.46 millimeters. No problem with 0.25. This is 0.45, and that won't fit, so that one's good. Okay, and on to the oil rings. Let me use the squiggly ones. I'm not sure you can actually file these, so hopefully they're all the right. Oh. That's interesting. Okay, so I think there might be, there we go. Are there? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so there's eight. Uh, okay, so these will be the squiggly ones. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, there we go. So these come in pair or in sets, I guess. If I remember correctly, it's basically two of these super thin ones, and then the squiggly one goes in between them. Uh, okay. Does that mean I have to fit these all at the same time? <laughs> uh, might as well do it that way. These ones aren't nearly as tight. Or sturdy, actually, they're quite flimsy, but I guess that's all you need. Whoa, 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 shit. Okay, fixed. <laughs> All right, let me be clear that now that that's fixed, I'm absolutely not worried about the quality and or the accuracy of these at all.
Okay, no, next step is to get the crank back in. Uh, so get the crank in, uh, put the sealant on, and put the second half of the engine block back together. Okay, I've got some new crank bearings here. These are all pretty straightforward. You have one that's uh, bigger. They all have notches, so you can't really put these in wrong. And one side's gonna have holes in it. This, uh, I guess the top side technically, and one side won't. So it should be pretty easy to, to figure this out. Okay, Mod Mini put a little oil on the back of these, so I'm gonna do the same. And uh, we're just gonna start putting these in. And in case you're wondering, I already cleaned all the surfaces with some parts cleaner, even though it was all cleaned at the machine shop, I did it with parts cleaner again. So we should be good. Okay, so those are flush with the sides. All the holes are open. So now, we take the crank, which is, now this is our new crank. And we, oh yeah, okay. Spin in freely. Perfect. Okay, uh, we just need a little bit of a sealant. It goes along here before we put the bottom half on. Uh, in the book it says to use, I guess you can't, I don't know if you can see that or not, but Loctite 5970 and Loctite or Loctite 518. Don't, well, I don't know if you can get that anymore, but this company has like a, a uh, equivalency table and they basically said this is the same thing. So Permatex 51813 is the same, same stuff. I'll use the container. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be very thin, so I don't wanna put too much on. Now we put is this right? Yeah. This on. Got a little seeping out the sides, which I think is a good sign. But none really seeping on the inside. There's a little bit, I'll wipe it out. And then before we spin it, we're just gonna put a little more assembly lube around everything. Okay, and turn it a bit. Smooth, smooth, smooth. Now, some bolts. Okay, so next up is all the main cap bolts that go in here. Let's make sure there's no fluid in there. Main cap bolts in the center. Uh, the inner ones all have to be replaced. The other ones, uh, I don't know if they all have to be replaced. Uh, I think I have new ones. So we'll just put those in and they have to be they have to be oiled first. Not covered in oil, but just a little bit of oil on them. And I know some people will use like, uh, like aftermarket ones for most, I think for these, plus all the, the head bolts and everything, I'm just using the factory one replacements. 
uh, for the price difference between the factory replacements and like the ARP ones, like the racing ones, like it was, you can replace the factory ones like five times, I think. Uh, and I don't, <laughs> I mean, if I'm replacing my head bolts five times, I've got other problems. them down by hand first. Okay, they are 44 Newton meter or uh, foot pounds. Gotta make sure I get the pattern right. God, I don't trust this thing. Yeah, so this torque wrench doesn't actually work. It's going in the garbage. Ah, uh, that's frustrating. You ever get that feeling it feels like you're doing something wrong? I have two broken torque wrenches. I just put them on a bolt that doesn't move and tried to put it at 10 pounds and they didn't click. Like, piece of junk. I'll load this go. Oh, it'll just go to the right. Okay. So I've got a 44. Oh, I'll use my giant wrench. Because I know it works. It's a little cumbersome, but I think with just a big hammer or a big wrench like this, you just have to be a little slower and more careful because you can put so much torque on it. Oh, where am I now? <clears throat> okay, that's a big step done. Uh, the crank is back in. All the bearings obviously are in there. The sealant is done. These are all torqued to spec. Uh, now we just move on to the actual pistons and the connecting rods. Let's do that now. Now it's time to put the actual pistons in and need to clock the ring. The gap in the rings can't all be in the same spot, so they're in very specific places, which you can see in this picture. And all the pistons are marked with a front of engine. There's an F, I think that's what that means. And there's also an arrow, so <laughs> I would guess that's the front engine. Okay, so one, two, Upper, lower. Okay. Now this is the front. And what I need to do 
is use this tool. And the idea is I put it over top of this. That's not the best tool in the universe, like highest quality tool in the universe. So I put this over top, I put the cylinder close to it, I squish the cylinder down so all the rings get compressed. Yeah, so I put this over top. I compress it down. I just turn a little key here and it crunches all down and that'll squeeze all the rings in and then I can slide it into the cylinder. Okay. Front is here and I already took the bottom off and I have it in the right orientation so I can put it back on the bottom. Um, I don't really know the right order to do this in. I'll first get this big enough and make sure everything's clocked right still. Oh, see, good thing I double checked because Good thing I double checked because I actually have everything backwards. Yes, I do. I don't think it actually would have mattered because as long as they're opposites to each other, but might as well do what the book says to make sure exactly what the book says, just to be sure. Once again, I've chosen the hottest days to work on this. It is approximately 38 degrees out. <laughs> and I know the best way to do this. Cylinder number one is in. Okay, two down. Okay. <clears throat> I realize now, while I'm putting the fourth one in, that I should have probably put the bearings in first, but I shouldn't have too many. I did it before without pulling the, the pistons out, so I'll flip it over and I'll do it after. No, 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 it didn't work. Uh, the ring has popped out. Oh, that's not good. Okay, well, I just dropped the cylinder, or the piston. I just dropped the piston. Uh, let me show you the. So it's got My concern is that there's like a brown, I don't know what this is, but it looks like a brown protective layer on the outside or the top of the piston here and there's little marks in it. 
I've got three other pistons that I can use. It's just, I have to take them all apart and clean them and everything. But I mean, if I put this together and that was the reason it broke, <laughs> I probably wouldn't forgive myself. Crap. All right. Okay, uh, I'm gonna do the first one. It's, it's in and it's in place. It's where it should be. So I'm not gonna wait on that. There's arrows on here and these are perfectly lined up. This one's a little bit off and yeah, that's what did it. So just be really careful about how lined up they are. Okay, so now I'm gonna put the other two bearings in on the bottom. to mess this part up. You just do it by touch. So then I roll them this way towards me so that when I roll this down, they fall into the slots. And this one's at the top. So we will push, push the cylinder all the way down and then I'll put the new bearing in again those are flush and I know the numbers go towards the front yours may be different but you'll know because these are all fractured um, on the side and when you have them on correctly and done up correctly, the seam looks like it's not there, like it basically disappears. So I can see these are all, yeah, it disappears when I push down on it, so that's the right way. I went through like three of those cheap Amazon torque wrenches in less than a year. You know, I, lo I loosen up the tension every time they just don't last, so I went out and bought today an actual good one. Um, and I've got these ARP bolts. Um, now these are the race ones, you can reuse them. So, And then the instructions are here, so you just put them into 25 pounds. That I can do. And they've got like a little bit of, uh, you put this stuff on it, and then you tighten it to 25 pounds. Okay, that is for pistons and connecting rods attached to the crankshaft. Nice. Okay, that's the end of part one. Consider this your intermission. You can go get another drink. You can go get some food. Um, find the channel or the new video on my channel. If I can link it, I'll link it here uh, or I'll put it in the description as well. But uh, yeah, head on over to that second video and keep on watching.